Last week, McDonald's Chief Executive Officer Chris Kamsinski announced in an email to the company that McDonald's was exiting Russia. Most of the company's operations in Russia had been suspended following the imposition of sanctions on Russia after its invasion of Ukraine. But the announcement expands and extends the decision, moving from a temporary suspension of operations to a permanent withdrawal from Russia, the de-arching of the country as he described it. McDonald's established its first location in Russia, which at the time was still the Soviet Union, on January 31st, 1990. At the time, this was widely recognized as an important international symbolic moment in the relations between Russia and the West. When McDonald's first opened on Pushkinaya Square in Moscow, more than 10,000 people waited hours in a line that stretched more than a quarter of a mile as they queued to experience their first Big Mac. Forget hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. Today, these Russians wanted it all. 30,000 of them, twice what anyone expected, crammed through the golden arches before the day was done. Because I'm hungry. <laughs> Soviets are used to standing in long lines for just about anything. But for Big Macs and fries, it's a first. The early reviews were raves. I like it. You like it? Yeah. At least today, Muscovites were willing to buy a McDonald's meal for double the tab of a meal at a state-subsidized restaurant. And most of them were stunned by the cleanliness, good service, and speed. It hasn't been easy. It took McDonald's 14 years to negotiate this deal and they had to teach Russian farmers how to raise leaner cows and grow bigger potatoes. For Russian workers, learning to be courteous was culture shock. <laughs> Cynics may wonder how long this will last, but McDonald's hopes to cash in in a big way. For now, it plans to put all those junk food rubles into more and more McDonald's all over the Soviet Union hoping Soviets by the millions will decide it's also their kind of place. Remember that throughout the Cold War period, the Soviet Union had been largely disconnected from the Western and the broader global economy. As a result, Western brands like McDonald's and Coca-Cola were not generally available there. The opening of the McDonald's, particularly at such a prominent location in Moscow, and the popular reception it received among ordinary Russians at the time was perhaps the clearest indication of an important and dramatic shift taking place in the global order. The end of the Cold War was at hand, and a new international system appeared to be in the making. But if McDonald's opening in Russia was such a dramatic international event, what does its closing signal? Hey everyone, I'm Noah Zerbe. I'm a professor of global politics at California State Polytechnic University Humboldt. Welcome to IR Explainer, where I explore the theories and concepts behind current events in international relations and global politics. The operations of McDonald's in Russia symbolized the growing reach of the liberal international order. The rules-based system centered on free trade, capital mobility, and democratic political systems, and rooted in international institutions like the World Trade Organization and the United Nations. The ascension of Russia to the international order signaled in many ways the height of that system. Russia would apply for membership in the WTO in 1993 and would finally join the organization in 2012 after 19 years of negotiations. The global expansion of McDonald's into a number of newly independent post-Soviet countries also led to the articulation of the Golden Arches theory of conflict prevention. First outlined by Thomas Friedman in an article in the New York Times and later expanded upon in his book, The Lexus and the Olive Tree, the Golden Arches theory of conflict prevention is essentially a reskinning of the idea of the liberal international peace or of Immanuel Kant's democratic peace hypothesis. Specifically, Friedman noted that no two countries that both have a McDonald's have ever fought a war against each other. Essentially, Friedman was arguing that as countries develop economically, a stronger middle class emerges, one that's large enough to support a McDonald's. As a result of a more politically influential middle class, countries are less likely to go to war with one another. Again, this is a retelling of Kant's theory of the democratic peace, that democracies generally don't go to war with one another, and of the idea of the liberal peace, that closer economic ties between countries reduce the likelihood of conflict between them. 
A number of critics quickly seized on Friedman's theory, observing that there have actually been a number of conflicts between countries with McDonald's restaurants. In 1999, for example, NATO bombed targets in Yugoslavia, ironically destroying a McDonald's location in Belgrade in the attack. And depending upon the definition of what constitutes a war, other exceptions stand out. In 1989, the United States invaded Panama to, to depose Manuel Noriega. In 1999, India and Pakistan fought the Kargil conflict over Kashmir. And Russia attacked Georgia in 2008 and Ukraine in the Crimea region in 2014 and again this year. All of these conflicts, if we understand them as wars, run counter to the Golden Arches thesis. That is, all of these countries had McDonald's. But seen from this perspective, I think we might be able to frame the decision by McDonald's to shutter its operations in Russia as a symbolic moment in the reversal of the trends toward increased globalization and an important moment in the breakdown of the liberal international order. That's it for now. If you're interested in learning more, check out my video on the liberal international order, which I'll link to in the description below. I'll also link my video on the democratic peace hypothesis and my video on the role of the liberal international peace in the creation of the European Union. If you found this video helpful, click the thumbs up button and subscribe to catch future explainers when they're released. Please leave any questions you have about this video below, or if you have any suggestions for future explainers, I'd welcome those as well. Thanks everyone. Bye.